Hello, I'm Georgia Stull, and I'd like to demonstrate how pattern anchors work within Creative Studio. Most likely, if you click on a pattern on your screen, it's the edge anchors or purple handles that are going to appear. Quite frankly, these are the handles that I think you'll use the most as you manipulate patterns. How do all of these handles work? Let's start with that center circle. As I hover over the center circle, notice that my cursor becomes a small crosshair. Now I can left click and hold, and I'm able to reposition that pattern anywhere on the CAD screen. My most common move is to take this upper left handle and put it into the upper left corner of my boundary, and you'll see why. I position that in that place. Now I can grab the opposite handle because this is an edge anchor, it will fix or not move from this corner. I can grab this corner and notice how it fills the space, a lot of the space, with just one movement. Did you notice that my height and width both change? And they change proportionally. That is because I used my square anchor. Any of these square anchors will produce the same result. But now I'm in a position where I need some height, I don't need some width. That's when I move to my wedge anchors. A wedge anchor will, again, stay fixed on the opposite side. I'm able to pull down, and now I gain some height, but it did not adjust my width. Likewise, I can use the right or left wedge, and I will gain some width, but it won't affect the height. You'll notice a small curved arrow in the center. I can click on that, it turns gray, and I'm able to rotate the pattern within that boundary. Another way that I can get to the purple handles is to select a pattern and use F9 key on my keyboard. Now I can double click and I get my center anchors or my orange handles. Another way to get to these handles is to use F10 on my keyboard. It's a nice, easy shortcut. These are different from my edge anchors because they anchor from the center. I use these handles often. If my customer has a four patch, I want the center of the design to stay fixed over the center of that four patch, but I need to alter the size of the pattern, an anchor on the corner will move all four sides equally. The center stays fixed, all four sides will move equally. An anchor on the side, the wedge anchor will allow it to gain some width on the right and the left, and a wedge on the top or bottom will allow it to gain some size top to bottom. As before, I can reposition with the center anchor handle, and I can rotate with the curved arrow that you see present. The next handles are available if I double click. It should be endpoint anchors, but I didn't get endpoint anchors. And that's because this design by TJ Spicer has a start and end in the same place. It's connected to itself. So let's move our screen over by panning and look at this pattern. This is a pattern by Karen Farnsworth, and when I select it, I have the gray handles because that is what I was using last. And let's cycle through. Double click my edge anchors, my center anchors, and yes, now I have my endpoint anchors. Notice that these endpoint anchors are square, and that means when I pull this anchor, I'm going to get height and width. It is not possible with these anchors to get only height or get only width. We must move the corners and get both. Now, the next anchors are the gray anchors, the gray handles, or our stretch anchors. So let's move back over here. One, two, three, there we go. There are my gray handles or my stretch anchors. I frankly call these my tweaking handles because I don't use them except for tweaking. And what I mean is when I get everything as close as I can get it, that's when I call in my stretch handles. And this is why if I make movements, particularly inward, it's very easy to warp a pattern and I can't get it exactly where I had it before. At this time, that's when you want to remember that Control Z on your keyboard is your best friend. Did you notice with one touch on my keyboard, I was able to bring that pattern back to the position that I had it before. I found that for the most part, 
you need slow, steady movements, tiny movements actually, that um, allow you to make changes and stretch and don't cause it to get way out of whack. I think it's important when I'm using these stretch handles and I'm doing the final tweaking to remember a couple of rules that I have. It's obvious that my customer's block is not square. I don't know about you, but that happens quite frequently to me. And I want to be sure to give the illusion that my customer's um, quilt block is square though. So two rules I have is if there are arrows that point to something, in this case the corner, I'm going to make sure that yes it does point to something. This one doesn't quite point to that corner. I can make a small adjustment so that it does point to that corner. The other rule I have is that any part of the pattern that comes in contact with the outside boundary needs to be evenly in contact with that boundary. It will give the illusion that this pattern is square and it's fitting into a square block. Obviously it's not, and I can demonstrate that. I have a square boundary. Let's move that pattern into that square boundary. Wow, you can see that it's definitely not square, but if it's quilted in this manner, it will look square. If it looks square, my customer looks good, and guess what? They want to come back to me for quilting. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. Thank you so much.